Well, hey everyone, welcome back. In these next few videos, we'll be talking about software instrument tracks. And in this particular video, I'll show you how to record in MIDI notes with a MIDI controller and also how to program them in with a mouse. So let's create a software track first. I'm gonna go up to here and press this plus for new track. It's gonna ask me what type of track I'd like to create. So uh, we're gonna select software instrument and also make sure that open library is not checked. Then I'm going to say create. And if this inspector isn't open on the side, make sure you press I. Then in this slot right here where it says instrument, that's where I'm going to put or place the software instrument. So I'm going to click here on the drop down arrows. It's going to show me a menu and it's going to show me all the different options I have for software instruments. So for right now, I'm going to choose the sampler instrument and choose stereo. It's going to automatically open up the sampler plugin window. And just so you know, for any plugin to close that window, I can click on the top left hand corner here on this X. That'll close the window. And to reopen it, I'm just going to double click here on the sampler uh, plugin slot on the channel strip. Let's go to the uh, where it says factory default here and click this drop down window. It's going to open up a few options. Um, but most importantly, get to our presets our sounds for this plugin. Let's go to factory and let's go to acoustic pianos and we'll choose classical piano. So a lot of times if I'm composing something from scratch, I'll start writing from the piano because I find it easier to transfer my ideas than from the piano to the other instruments. So if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can use your mouse or trackpad to program MIDI notes in one at a time. To do that, first I'm going to decide where in this main window track area I want to put my MIDI notes. So let's choose our piano track at, say, measure 41. Now I'll press T and choose the pencil tool. And click once with the pencil tool on that measure. And this is going to create an empty MIDI region. So let's double click on that. And that's going to open up what's called the piano roll down below. And we can expand that up a bit. Let's click in an empty spot anywhere here in the piano roll. And then you'll see this blue border around it. And that's just gonna ensure that it's selected and that we can start working within the piano roll. And also make sure you have this button pressed in and it will turn green. And that's gonna allow us to hear the pitches of the notes when inputted or if I press notes on the keyboard here to the left. Now press T again, and it's going to show us all the tools we have available to use in the piano roll. Now the tools in the piano roll are similar to the main window tools that we just saw a moment ago, but they're slightly different, so don't be confused by that. And again, we're going to select the pencil tool. And with that selected, I can click anywhere here in the piano roll, and it's going to create a note. And if you click and hold where you want to put your note, it will allow us to adjust the length of that note. As you can see where I place notes vertically chooses which pitch they play. So the higher up the piano roll I place them, the higher the pitch. And horizontally, just like in the main window, determines the timing. Let's take a quick look at drum programming specifically. So first let's create a software instrument track and we'll put a drum kit on it. And let's choose drum kit designer. We'll then create our empty MIDI region. And with that region selected, let's press five to open up screen set five, which is just the piano roll and gives us more room to work. And if you're not using the provided template, you can open a separate piano roll from the window menu options and expand it to the full size of the screen. So instead of having each note play a pitch like we saw with our piano instrument, in this instance, each MIDI note has one drum sound assigned to it. So to find the sounds you'll use most often, your kick will usually be C1. Snare is going to usually be at D1. Uh, Hi-hats will be found on the black keys uh, between F sharp 1 and A sharp 1 and the toms will be in the surrounding white keys. And then the rest of it will be kind of like a free-for-all and you'll find percussions and cymbals a little bit higher up. 
Some of Logic's drum instruments will also let you view the drum names if I zoom in far enough. So let's use the zoom tool to zoom in from around C1 to C3. So control option, hold those down, and then click in this area. And that can be really helpful to see those drum names. So instead of pressing T to get to your tools for the piano roll, I'm going to show you two more ways which may be easier for you. Uh, if I hold down Control and then click in an empty area of the piano roll, it's going to open up the tools. And there's also this feature called a secondary tool. So uh, it's up here in this area. So the main tool that I have open is the pointer tool, so I'm not going to change that. But this is the command click tool. And I can open up this menu and choose any different type of tool for a command click. So the way it works very simply, if I have the pencil tool uh, selected, I'm going to hold down command. And every time I press down command, it's going to switch it to the pencil tool. And this, is can, this can be very efficient for programming drums or really anything. I also have the secondary tool option available in the main window. And it works independently from the secondary tool in the piano roll, so I can choose those separately if I wanted to. So I have the pencil tool, so you can see that I can go back and forth between the two easily. And what's great about secondary tool is, it, is that I can choose it depending on what type of thing I am doing in Logic. So if I was working on automation, I would switch this maybe to something like automation curve tool for that task. All right, well, let's program some drum notes in. Okay, so I'm going to use the command click tool. Let's go to the kick, put a kick pattern in real simple, beats one and beat three here of this measure. And let's do a snare backbeat on two and four. And now let's go open hi-hat maybe here on eighth notes. And there we go. I think we need more cowbell, actually. That's it, okay. Well, as you just saw, I can grab a note or a group of notes uh, and move them around here to different pitches, or in this case, drum sounds, or different rhythms here in the piano roll. And we'll get deeper into MIDI editing in the next video. Now let's record MIDI data into Logic with the MIDI controller. So if you haven't seen my videos on the control bar display or the preferences, it might be helpful to watch those as well. So I have my software track selected and I have a software instrument assigned to that track. And I can start playing my keyboard now to make sure it's triggering the instrument. And it seems like it is. And if it's not working, make sure that this record enable button is red. And if you're still not hearing it, the MIDI controller may not be connected properly. So again, check out some of the earlier videos where I talk about this. Now, if I find that there's a noticeable delay between when I play the keyboard and when I hear the sound come out of the speakers, I can turn this button on called low latency monitoring. And if you're not seeing that in the control bar display, you can control click here in this area and select that in the options. So turning on low latency monitoring along with lowering the in and out buffer size in the audio preferences can mitigate that delay or latency. Just remember to turn off low latency monitoring when you're done recording. Next, I'm going to set my tempo and I can double click right here in this region and type it in. And then I'm going to choose my tempo guide that I'm going to record along with. So in this case, it can be either the LCBC templates click or Logic's built-in metronome. So let's just use the LCBC click track and the volume controls are easily accessible for that down here. And I'm going to place the playhead on the time ruler a measure or so before where, where I want to start recording, which here is at, right at the count off. Then I'm going to press R One, two, three, and then start recording. Four. Then I'm going to press space bar to stop recording. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And the next video, I'm going to talk about MIDI region and MIDI note editing. So check that out.